This is the Shure BLX4 wireless system. This particular microphone that we're using is the uh, BLX1. That's the lapel mic. So this battery pack is a simple AA battery system. It allows you to pin this to somebody's jacket or throw it in their pocket. The best thing is to keep this antenna um, upright. So if you're going to give it to a guy and he puts it in his breast pocket of his jacket, don't put it upside down. Make sure it's upright. Maybe pin this to the back of their belt so it's on their backside so the antenna is upright. But I found that it's best to try to keep this thing in the front of their bodies because that's what's facing you at the mixer board. So that way the line of sight is a little better. Throw the batteries inside here and you'll get yourself some power for the unit and that's where you'll dial in the channel to match what you sync this unit. So after you power it up, hit the group button, it'll scan and it'll land on a channel. The LED will light up with that channel that it finds no interference. So it'll live there. And after you power the unit up with the battery, you'll see that it'll blink its previous channel. But if you need to set it, all you're gonna do is hit group and keep pushing it while you're, excuse me, hit group so you can get to the actual group number. And then you're gonna select it by clicking a, the group button. So it's a, just push it once so it blinks and then start hitting it up and down. All right, again, you're matching what this guy, the um, landed on. Sorry, for my stalled speech, I'm just checking something on the other unit. All right, cool, so this guy here, you dial it in, you hit that, then you hit channel to get to the number. So you'll, as every other BLX system, it does it'll have a alpha numeric channel so you hit group to get to the alpha let go of the group so it stops blinking now you're locked in on J go to channel hit it and start going to town on up it just scrolls through and then you let go when you run with that so now you've selected J3 so it's in this is a lapel mic system that has a gain knob. I find this to be um, a good setting to kind of ride and die after you've already set your gain structure, gain structure on your mixer. So I don't really touch this, but anything. Right now it's set up just before noon. I used this a week ago and the lapel mic was about eight inches from the officiant's mouth and that was plenty gain enough. So after you get the unit powered up, it's synced to the same channel of the receiver and the transmitter talking. The lapel mic is easy to plug in. Sure has this proprietary pin system. I think it's uh, four pins and that's what this little bugger is here. So the microphone ends up going to this cord. I like to run this through and up somebody's shirt, pop it out, pin it to their jacket. If it's inside their lapel um, or you put this inside their pocket, just tuck the slack inside maybe their armpit area and then you just pin this into their lapel. This clip does come off, so if you choose to put this on a guy's jacket that's on his left lapel, then fine. But if you need to put it on the right lapel, then you'll have to change the clip. So you have to change the clip direction. That's all. Just to pin it on with a dude's jacket. So after you plug the microphone, pin the cable into the unit, you're active. I do all this with my channels muted. You don't want to work this live. Don't pop your speakers by doing that. Every uh, Sure microphone system has the XLR out or the quarter inch out and a power. Here's your power cord. I have a yellow XLR for this unit. It'll simply go in, of course, the mic out. And then your microphone cable will go into this mixer I'm gonna lend you. This is my Behringer Xena 1202. It's just a 
multi-channel mixer. All you're gonna be concerned with is plugging this into channel one. The mic channel has an EQ. Um, the compression is gonna be left at zero. The EQ can be left at 12 o'clock, but with a lapel mic, I usually get rid of the low cut. So I, d I push the low cut button in. I actually might trim the low again. I might mess with this. This is just so we sound full and EQ to this open space in the museum. Do your best. The gain is here. This is just definitely opening up the channel for more pickup. If you are giving this lapel mic to an officiant who then is going to be asking the bride and groom questions, so you want to hear those come through, you'll find that this gain can be pretty sensitive to pick up people. You don't need to peg this sucker. Don't. Uh, we don't want to hear everybody coughing through the microphones. So just enough to hear um, the acknowledgement of a bride and groom is all we can ask for. If it's something where they wrote their own vows and we need to hear them, then I would always suggest that they have another microphone. So this particular gig on Saturday, I would pin this microphone onto the officiant about eight inches away from his mouth. So it's down his chest a little bit. He's usually reading. So his chin will obviously tilt more towards our microphone. The reason I say don't pin it up too close to his chin is because if we do want to hear the bride and groom, it's better that it's away from that dude's mouth. But don't go anything more than eight inches and uh, between six and eight inches. Don't put this thing down by his belly button. So this microphone channel, you turn up appropriately where you need it. And then the main fader is your main knot. This is a quarter inch output mixer, but I have the appropriate cables for you to get to XLR and then your XLR cables will give you length to your own speakers. So this is the output. Main out to the XLR, and then you can go from there. Because my cables to get out of this small mixer, I think are only um, six foot cables on purpose. We don't run those long enough because I didn't want to buy them. And that's the only thing. Now, if you're going to run music, then you can just go into one of these channels with a RCA excuse me, quarter inch for the uh, iPad or something. But that's this mixer in a nutshell. It's just multi-channel, so, but you're gonna use the mic channel here, ride and die this gain with your test. With my microphone lapel mic system, I will put this on myself eight inches off my chest and do a test walking away from the mixer and the speaker. I'll go set up my body physically where the officiant will be, do the mic check with my volumes, then I'll turn off my microphone, walk back to the table, remembering where I liked my level, and I'll just kill the fader, uh, the main. I'll keep this in my possession until I see the officiant. I'd say no reason to give this microphone to the guy, setting him up and pinning it onto him. You know, five to 10 minutes out. And that way you can uh, flip it on for him. It'll live in his pocket on. But because you have it off here, excuse me, the fader's off, you don't have to worry about it being heard on the PA system. Don't let this guy, um, the officiant, be responsible for turning this on. You turn it on and you tell him not to turn it off. It's your job to make sure it's on and rocking. With the mixer, I'm gonna have you guys a set of uh, rechargeable batteries. These are mine to come back, and that's how you'll get uh, power to the, the pack.